one is called electrocardiogram and this is also called EKG with letter K and uh, the reason why there's a cardiogram with the K is it's actually uh, it's it belongs to a German spelling that's why this uh, K comes uh, K comes in here uh, today we're going to talk about basic of the EKG uh, and the importance of EKG uh, because EKG is very important for understanding the electrical activity of the uh, electrical activity of the heart and that is usually done by putting different electrodes uh, on different on the chest and also in the different uh, different body surface uh, especially your right arm late arms and also left leg uh, to understand uh, the how the electrical how the heart uh, is functionally working basic basic role for your heart is to function and uh, the, and also uh, have the uh, ability to ability to contract uh, and also maintain the cardiac rhythm so that way uh, your heart uh, your heartbeat is maintained and usually our heartbeat is about like 72 beats per minute and we'll talk about I uh, will talk about that so let's uh, let's talk about how this EKG works okay so I'm gonna draw what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw your heart so follow me here so this is going to be my right heart so right atriums and then I'm gonna draw this part right here as my skeleton this is called my fibrous skeleton and then so just follow me here and then obviously I'm gonna have my ventricles my left and right ventricles All right so so obviously like Entry of the superior vena, uh, entry of the superior vena cava. You'll have your right atrium. I'm going to label this as my right atrium, and then obviously this is going to be my left atrium, and this is going to be my fibrous skeleton. Okay, and then this is going to be my, let's say, right ventricle, and this is going to be my left ventricle, and this portion right here will use this as my intraventricular septum and intraventricular septums are divided into two parts obviously you're going to have membranous part and obviously you're going to have a ventricular part now now we'll talk about how does this work now first of to understand is that remember we know this as a node as a node is a pacemaker of our, our heart right because it has automaticity meaning that it has intrinsic property and this can fire spontaneously and generate electrical impulses. That's what these guys do, acinodal cells do, right? So whenever acinodal fires electrical impulses, obviously it's gonna fire to from different neural tracts. It will go to uh, anterior internal tracts, middle and posterior neural tract, and that will give impulses to the atria and then atrial depolarize. And from there, the AV node is which, which is uh, located in here, let me just write down, this is as my AV node here, AV node here, right, okay? And then it will go to this bundles of hairs, and from the bundles of hairs, what happens, it will divide into your right and left bundles of branch, and then gives up Purkinje fibers. This is left bundle branch, okay, and it gives fibers to the uh, left ventricles and also the interventricle septums. We'll come to that, but we'll talk about how this is works. So basically, when the whenever the cell, when it's spontaneously as you know, the cells fires, it goes to the it goes to this atrium, right? So how is this going to do? So let me draw as you know, cell here, okay? So let me put this as you know, let me pick up. I'm going to put this and I'm going to draw here. Follow me. So if you have these cells right here, one, two. Let me just write a few cells here. Like this, okay. So these acinodal cells are basically modified myocardial cells, right? And they have a conducting properties, conducting properties. So when acinodal fires, it fires nearby cells. So so around the cells here, this is what it fires. So nearby the cells it fires, right? So when when nearby cell fires, that is how and these cells like connected with each other by this intercalar desk and they have this uh, gap junctions. Okay, gap junctions right here. That is how the impulses are 
passing from passing from acinerol cells to the atria, correct? That's when impulses are going from the acinerol to avinerol cells. And the conductions of the impulses traveling is about 0.05 uh, meter per second usually about. The reason why is because the acinerol cells have like they're, they're smaller cells and they're, they're, because they're small cells obviously their diameters are small when the diameter is small they have like uh, less number of gap junctions when you have less number of gap junctions they have more resistance plus because acinoral cells if you know from the previous lectures well, what happens is that acinoral has this prepotential pre, uh, pre potential slope and then they have this uh, uh, calcium channel and it looks something like this, right? Because if you look at this, what happens to acinoral cells, their resting membrane potential, resting membrane potential is about negative 55 millivolt, okay? Because of this, the electronegative is also greater comparing to the Purkinje cells or, or, the, or like ventricle myocardiums or atrial myocardium. Because of that, the electronegative is relatively greater than the ventricle microdome, atrial microdome. So, so the attractions of the cations uh, from the extra fluid would also be less. Because of that too, what happens is the impulses from here uh, travels very slowly to the atria. Okay, that is what it is. So now, I'm going to talk about how the cell depolarizes my this, and what is the role of this. So, let me let me take some of the cells from atria, some of the cells from ventricle, ventricles, and talk talk about how the depolarizations happens, and and also role of vector. We'll talk about that here. Okay, so follow me here. What I'm going to take is I'm going to take ECG machine. So our this is called a mentor is one of a mentor, which basically is a it's a it's a it, it helps us to detect the electrical current, right? So if I do this, and let me say this is going to be my uh, center point, and let me say this is my uh, needle, okay? And then I'm gonna, and this is going to be my positive side, this would be my positive side here, and this would be negative side of the needles, okay? And then I'm gonna draw with my red, I'm gonna make this angle, this has two points, okay? And then let me draw, red with this positive electrodes and then let me draw this with negative electrodes okay and then let me just write down the cell of the atrial atrial cell so if i try write atrial cells for here right here okay and then let me just draw some cells right here This is for just the understanding purpose, right? And then let me put negative electrodes right here on this side. And then let me write down positive electrodes on this, this side. Positive side, okay? So this is just, this is a one cell of the atrial cell, okay? And then let me write down, at the same time here, let me just quickly write down uh, here with this, uh, I'm gonna draw, write down the ventricle myocardium cells also. Just write down this way, and they're all connected with this each other. Right now, this is referring to my ventricular myocardium. Okay, and again, I put again here there will be a negative charge I'm putting here, negative electrodes, and then I'm going to put positive electrodes on this side. So I'm going to call this is positive, and I'm going to call this add side as let's say, let me start A. And let's see, this is B side. Let, and let me say this is also A side here. And let me say the B side here. Okay. What I'm gonna do is like, look, if I take one cell here, right? The atrial cells, and remember this this is this cell represents my let's say resting membrane potential of my atrial cells, meaning this cell is resting right now. Right now, this cell is resting. Okay, if this cell is resting, what is gonna happen here is that this inside the cell what is happening these are all negative right electronegative that's what it is happening so 
when I put my electrodes on A side, I'm putting the negative side, uh, A si this side, and then I'm putting the uh, positive side. When I put the positive side, when the cell is completely repolarized, meaning when when cell has gained its polarity, it's electronegative. That means what is going to needle is going to do? Would the, would the needle able to read this? Would the needle able to fluctuate? Probably not, right? Because remember the needle. The reason why this needle fluctuates is because if there is a if there is a wave of wave of charges is is moving, okay, or depolarization is having, then it will able to generate a magnetic field, okay, or it will able to gener generate a magnetic force, and those force usually to represent the force, the directions of which the electrons are flowing, the charges are flowing, we usually use vector. But we do not use scalar for our understanding purpose because there is a difference between vector and scalar. Vector basically means it has magnitude plus it has also directions of the which which charges are flowing. Okay, And the scalar just uses the magnitude, but it does not use a direction. That's why we use the concept of uh, vector here to understand the directions of the, the, the charges are flowing because it's going to generate magnetic field. Okay, or force basically we're trying to understand. So if if the, my cells completely gain polarity in its electronegative cells, then basically what's gonna happen is that the needle would not able to fluctuate or deviate. It will it will just stay the same. Okay, so that's why this needle will be still at the let's say zero degree, zero degree. It will not able to fluctuate at all. But now in this cell, let's say in this cell, this this cell right here. What I'm, what's going to happen here is that let's say this is a cell from this from the cell A. If you're going to move, move B, the cell is started depolarizing. Meaning, when you're depolarizing, meaning what happens? Depolarizing means that it started gaining the cations, the positive cations. It could be sodium, it could be calcium. I'm just talking about the general concept. If you started gaining the po positive cation, cations, what's going to happen is that this will this cell, which is which was electronegative, which was po uh, polar. The, pol the, the polarity of the cell is going to lose, then it's, if, if you lose this, if the cell, if the cell loses its polarity, then we will simply call that cell is now depolarizing. So when the cell is depolarizing, it's going to move this direction, from, it's going to go to A to B. And remember one more thing, whenever this cell go to A to B, that means your negative, your electrodes is, we have put the negative electrodes on the A side and positive electrodes on the B side, right? So when the cell is getting positive, let's write down with this with these positive charges, let's say this positive, that means the cell is that means directions of depolarizing is going from A to B. So we usually represent, remember what I said is that when the wave of charges are moving that direction, going to the positive electrode, then we will simply uh, use this uh, use a vector. Let, let me put this vector here like this, and then we'll draw positive side on here. Okay, so when it moves, when deep obviously is, is getting the positive charges, that's why we put the positive charge here, and it's going to the, it's going to the positive direction. That means the needles right here, the this is the machine, let's say this is the machine, right? This will reflect on a positive direction, meaning it will, it will have a positive upward, okay, positive outflow, outflow, outflow or positive deflection. So if this positive, it might go here, okay? So that's that, That's what happens, okay? Also, 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 also other thing you have to understand is, I say this is a ventricle myocardium, right? Let me draw the same cell and let me talk about uh, atrial myocardium and this same cell here, I'm gonna draw it here, okay? Let's say this is my atrial myocardium cells. Okay, so if I'm comparing to the atrial myocardium and the ventricle myocardium, we have to look at a couple of different things. One is that we have to understand the diameter. Diameters, okay, and then number of gap junctions, right? And also we have to understand about the uh, obvious resistance and also the, uh, the channel. And also one more thing would be the electronegativity of the cell. Of the cell. Okay, so if I compare it to this, let's say the ventricle myocardium, what happens is that the ventricle myocardium has a Purkinje cells, right? And if they have Purkinje cells, which basically means that if they have Purkinje cells, that means they are larger in size because their diameter is larger. Let me just write down 
let me write down this is large in diameter that means they have a lot of gap junction as well if there's a lot of gap junctions the electrons can easily trickle down here and get to another cell in much more faster right another thing is that the channels what what kind of channels they open whenever the depolarization is happening they will open voltage gated sensitive sodium channel because of that because of that sodium sodium rushes into it and it it causes depolarization much more faster so the amplification of depolarization for ventricular myocardium cells would be greater right and other thing is that obviously the electronegativity of the cells would be like about negative 90 millivolt right if it's a negative of the cells in negative 90 volt, which means the cell is very, very negative. And your extracellular fluid compound, if I look, if I just make this, let's say this is my cell and let's say this is my extracellular fluid, right? If the cell is here is a negative 90 millivolt, then what happens is that if this cell is very, very negative, remember what happens with the, and then the concentrations of sodiums and extracellular fluid is higher. It's about like 140 uh, to 142 milliequivalent, equivalent, milli right? That's usually, that's level of, sodium. level of level sodium. And sodiums are cations, right? Positively charged particles. So if the cell is very, very negative, very poor, that means uh, the electronegative of the sodium will be inward. They want to go inside there. Because of all these reasons, what happens is that, what happens is that there, uh, there will be the amplification, there will be depolarizations of uh, the cell will be uh, strong. And faster because of that, they would able to gain uh, the bigger magnitude or amplitude when it comes about the vector. Okay, so comparing to atrial myocardium cell, atrial myocardium cell does not have Purkinje cells, right? It doesn't have Purkinje cells. Cells does have electronegative negative 90 millivolt, but there's less gap junctions, uh, less gap, gap junctions. Uh, their diameters are slightly Comparing to ventricular micro, they're less uh, or smaller. Because of that, what happens is that there will be a positive reflection, especially if we talk about this cell. Let's say this is also put a negative here, and then we put a uh, negative electrodes here and a positive electrode here, right? Obviously, the, it will have a positive reflections of the, the needle will flow if it's if it started gaining positive and moving this way. It does have the positive, it will have a positive reflection, but it will have a moderate velocity or the needle will fluctuate in a moderate level. It would not have a stronger uh, a stronger or very fast depolarizations. Okay, the reason why I mentioned this is because your thickness of your cell, let's say your thickness of your cells, your thickness of your, your thickness of your cell is directly proportional to the length of the vector. Length of the vector, what does that mean? Let me explain this really well. Okay, let me erase this and let me talk about this. Now, let me erase this part. So what I'm basically saying is that, look, if my if my cell is very, very thick, right, that means if my cell is very, very thick, that means I'm going to have a higher what? I'm going to, if my cell is very, very thick and then my diameter is big, that means I have more gap junctions. I'm going to have uh, more gap junctions. So that means my the because of that, I'm going to have a stronger force that would, that, I, I'm going to have a stronger force because of the stronger force, the stronger depolarizations. Uh, what's going to happen is my need, my ECG machine will have a stronger velocity. That's why, if you look at it, because of that, because of this, you're going to have a longer on vector. When it comes to length of the vector, will be longer because of stronger depolarizations. And let's say this is represent my ventricular. Let's say this is my ventricular, ventricular vector. Okay, but if I talk about atrial cells, because of their less gap junctions, and they do not contain Purkinje cells, and they're less gap junctions because of that, and the cell is the cell is relatively thin comparing to this one, compared to the ventricle myocardial. Because of that, the vector here you get to see here the length of vector would be smaller. Okay, because this length of vector basically tells whether you're going to have a stronger amplitude or weaker amplitude, or a stronger deviations or deflections. Or weaker deflections, and especially when you when you do ECG, uh, we'll see whether the whether if it's let's say for example if it, if it's big like this, remember that just means that I mean there's a stronger the stronger depolarization happening comparing to let's say if this is like this, that means there's a weaker depolarizations. Or if I do this, that means this that just basically says that the amplitude is shorter, right? That means 
it, this is a positive deflection, but it's a weaker deflection. That's what all it means, all right? Now, this is a basic concept, okay? Now, let's just talk about a few things. In generally, let me draw another cell here. Another cell right here, okay? Another cell right here, and again, let me say, now let's say all of the cells is completely depolarized. It's completely depolarized. If it's completely depolarized, and if I put negative charges here, and let's say positive electrode here with this is emission, right? If I do this, and you want to say it's completely polarized, that means what happens is that if it's completely polarized, then would the, would the ECG machine would able to recognize the complete depolarized cell? Probably not, right? Because what happens is that because the wave of the because the wave of the charges are not moving anymore because the cell is completely depolarized. So that way, the emitters or ECG meter would not read it. So it will just read it at one straight line. So these are these are called isoelectrical line as well in your ECG machine, right? Now, let's say for time being, I have this cell again. And what I'm doing is that if I am, let's say this is also negative here, I'm putting negative charges here and I'm putting positive charges here, right? Let's say, let's say if I, let's say if I give a stimulation and I am started depolarizing from this end, okay, from this, to this end. So it was resting on my potential before, right? So if I start depolarizing from, Depolarizing from this end, what is going to happen? That means I'm going this direction. So my vector will be obviously going this way. So I'm depolarizing from the B end. So I'll have start getting positive ends. Let me draw the right eye. Let me draw the right. So I'm going to draw this positive end right here. I'm going to have positive, right? So obviously, I'm depolarizing from the B end. So this vector will have positive. But am I going to have a negative deflections or positive deflections? Look, the electrodes on the B is positive. This is going away from the positive. So the UEC emission will read this as is going away from the away from the positive end. So because of that, you you're going to have a negative deflections, or your EC emission read as it will deviate to the negative. Okay, and if you don't understand this part, it's all right because we'll talk more about this uh, more about this too. Okay, so. These are just a general concept that I wanted to. I wanted you guys to understand the role of the the vectors and how vectors helps us to uh, draw the ECG line. Okay. Now, now let's go and talk about. I'm gonna talk about heart again, and then we'll talk about oh, and we'll make we'll produce vectors and and we and then we'll draw the ECG based on that. Okay. So now I'm gonna erase this. Now, let me draw my heart. Okay, I'm drawing my black heart, okay? I hope you don't have a black heart. Let me draw my, so let's say this is my atria. And then, ventricles. Let's say this is my ventricles, okay? Now, Obviously, acinodal cells here, and then let me draw a little bit down here. This is going to be my AV node, right? Look, AV node. So, when the SA, SA again, when the SA for the electric impulse is spontaneously, it goes, it goes to the atria, right? So now, now let's talk about these atria cells. Now, I'm gonna draw with atria cells, right? Let's say this is my atria cells. There's a lot of this guys here. Look, that means I put my positive here, electrodes with these emissions, and then this is going to be my, uh, actually, no, let me draw this man. Let me draw this man. Here, let's just draw this person right here. And then, okay, now. If I do, okay, my heart, right? So this man, heart is right here, right? Now, let me erase this. Let me erase this. Okay, so now let me say this is SA node, and then here we'll talk about this atrial cells, right? So this atrial cells, if I put electrodes here, now let me put electrodes here on this person, right? If I put electrodes, obviously with this, let's say this has uh, two ends here, 
And then you have a positive and negative ends right here. So let's write down my positive ends here. Okay, let's say this is positive, so we'll go this side positive, and then let's put this as a negative end. All right, and so when I put in this, right, so obviously. This, I'm putting the body separate, right? So it's, it, it's going to detect the, the electrical activities happening in the heart, right? So when the atria is depolarizing, so when the atria is depolarizing, so I put in this my cell, let's say this is my cell of atria, right? It's my cell's atria. So I obviously I took this part of atria and draw a due here, and I put negative end here and then positive end here. That's what I did, right? Exactly, I did that. Now, the cell was initially it was electronegative, right? But instead of getting the positive, what happens? Positive. Positive. So when you start getting positive, really what happens is that the wave of wave of the the charges are moving that direction. Because of that, it generated a magnetic field, it generated a force. And we represent this by a vector, right? So and because atria is atria is what? Atria is is thin, okay? So they and, and because they have less gap junctions, because of that. It would, it will, obviously, it will have a, what, a smaller vector, right? A smaller vector with positive direction because it's going to the positive electrode, positive electrode, but it will have a moderate amplitude or moderate velocity. So we'll represent this as a vector. So if I drew on my atria cells, this atria cells, so I'll have, let's say this is my one atria. So this is depolarizing from this way, right? It is going positive this way. So positive. So there will be a lot of vectors that are produced on the atria. Remember, these guys are all connected by, uh, like they they work as a sensation because if you, right atrium is contracting, the left atrium is also contracting at the same time. So that's what they that's what they build this network of electrical electrical. Uh, so uh, so because of that, because of gap junctions, what happens is that they work as a sensation, electrical sensation, right? So because they contract at the simultaneously or the same time, we could. We could we could combine all this uh, these vectors that is produced on the atria and make one vector. Okay, we can find the mean of that and produce one vector that represents all the atrial contraction. Okay, if I do that, remember how the how the currents how the uh, depolarization is happening. Depolarization is happening more downward and going to the leftward. So it will have it will show something like this. If I let's let me draw atria right here. So if I draw my atria right here, this is my heart. So I'll have a current or vectors, a mean vector would look something like this with the positive end right here. Okay, it is going downward and upward. Okay, and then obviously it's going to have a positive direction because it's going to the positive electrode. Right, right. That's what's happening. And if I want to draw the ECG line, because because this is a mean ECG will read as going upward, it will have upward direction. So in ECG machine, you will see something like in a CCMC or pattern, he'll have something like this, right? You'll see that. And, this will, and they'll call this as a P wave. Now, the second thing we're going to talk about is now, now after these depolarizations, all this current are passing, right? When the current are passing, impulses are going all of these places. And read this as, let's say, my fiber skeleton, okay? All the impulses are coming from atria to here. It is dying out, okay? And then you don't, and you want that to happen as well because you don't want. Uh, ventricle to contract when atria is contracting. Okay, that will give us huge problems. Okay, so because of that, what happens is that the only way the impulses can go to the ventricle is from this node, which is AV node. Okay, and this AV node is located at triangle of Cox, right? Right next to coronary sinus. Uh, it's located down here, like maybe around like here. Okay. That's why your your AV node is located. Obviously, it's located in the right atrium, right? That's the only way the electrical impulses can go. Because atria, let's talk about AV node. If you look, if you look at the AV node, AV nodal cells. I'm going to use blue color to draw AV. Cells. AV AV nodal cells are very, 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 very tiny, and they are more shaped like more like triangular shape, like this. So because of this, they are very, very tiny, very, very small cells. Because of that, they have a they have very less gap junctions. Because they have very, very less gap junctions, what happens is that there's more resistance. There are more resistance, okay? Because of the current can current can pass through with with very minimal, you know, uh, very tiny. So so because of that, 
because current can pass is through very, very tiny here, okay? And it, uh, very, very tiny, very, very small tiny because this gap functions. And also uh, what happens is that they have a voltage gated, what? Voltage gated calcium channel also, all right? And then their electronegative is about like negative 55 millivolt also. Because of all this reason, and obviously, obviously diameter too, the diameters are gonna be tiny. Because of all the reason, what, what happens is that the way the electro impulses travels here is very, very slow, okay? So because of that, it, it may be like 0 0.01 to 0 0.05 second, something like that, read the book, it should be around there, but it's very, very slow, okay? And the conduction velocity is very, very tiny. So because of that, what happens is that Sometimes you are, when the electrical activities or when the impulses are moving from the directions, uh, your ECC machine does not recognize it. Does not recognize it is because and it recognizes as your heart is silent, okay? But actually your heart is not silent. It, the, this impulse is just passing through, passing through it from the AV node at that time. Uh, it passes through AV node, no, 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 but in a normal ECC because it's so microscopic. It does not read this. It doesn't read it. That's why you just see the straight line like this. Okay. So if I connect this together, okay, if I connect this together here, you have this one, who is remember the atrial contraction, so atrial deposition, and you have this line you get to see in the ECG. Right. Okay? This is just representing the AV. This is just uh, representing the AV AV nodal cells where this is uh, the uh, current is passing passing through this. Okay, that's what it means. And this is the only way the current can pass through to reach to the ventricles, all right? Now, second concept we have to understand here is that, now, let's draw, let's come here. Other one is that now what is happening here is that let's just draw ventricle here. I'm gonna draw ventricles here in two different parts, okay? Just like I do, I do the cross section of the heart and I'm just leaving your ventricles. Okay, before even coming back to here, I'm gonna quickly talk, I'm gonna show you something about uh, how, what is happening on here, okay? So if I do my, my ventricles right here, let's say this, and then let's say this. Okay, now, remember this AV node is right here, right? AV node, and then little fibers comes here, these are called what? Bundles of his or Perkins G5, uh, say bundle of his, right? Or they are also called interventricle bundles. This interventricle bundle, what happens is it separates out, right? It gets splits out and then it becomes your left bundle branch, right? Goes like this. And then this one becomes your right bundle branch. Right bundle branch, okay? One of the big concepts here to understand is the, about the right bundle branch. When it's passing to the right bundle branch, what happens is that there's something called septomarginal band. What is the concept of septomarginal band now? Septomarginal band, okay? They also call this as moderator band. Moderator band, okay? And this passes, okay? This passes near the septum. Let's, this, let's make this as a septum right here, okay? This is passing near the septum, uh, passing near the, and anterior to the your papillary muscle. Remember, because remember what happens here. There's this big thing. These are septal cusps, right? If this right atrium, there's a the septal cusp right here, right? And this septal cusp, the three of them actually. And these are, well, these are, they're connected by this uh, cord-like structure, uh, cord tendony, and your papillary muscles, like this, right? So this, this, uh, your right motor branch, what happens, this, sorry, there's a septal margin band right down here. This septal margin band, what happens is that, is that it passes to the, uh, near the septums and goes to the anterior to the papillary muscles, right? And this septal margin band is the one that contains your right bundle branch, okay? So because of also that reason, what happens is this, your right bundle branch is not able to uh, give any fibers to your interventricular septums. So all the fiber that comes uh, or supplies your interventricular septums, that is given by this bundle branch, which is the left bundle branch, okay? Let me repeat, this is worth repeating. The importance of the um, importance of what I'm trying to say is this this bond of this interventricular septum right here, it is only supplied by left left bundle branch. Okay? It gives fibers to from the left bundle branch right here. Okay? And it when in when it supplies, it supplies from the lower end. It's from the lower end. Like this. It goes from this fibers go from the lower end, uh lower end of the interventricular septums. Okay. Hold that thought and we'll talk about that over there, okay? 
because it's a very important concept. So let's maintain this as my, I'm drawing this as, let's say, my interventricular septums. Okay, and let me divide this one as my major ventricular, the major ventriculars. This is going to be my left ventricles, and then let's say, let me just draw with LV, and this is going to be my right ventricles, and then this is uh, going to be my bay, my basal side of my ventricles, basal side of my ventricles. Okay, now what happens is that the first depolarization that takes place is the septum. Interventricular septum is the first that get depolarization. Dep that's what it get depolarized. Then major, dep then then major ventricle depolarize, and then basal ventricle depolarization happens. Right? What happens? Is, remember, we talked about this. This uh, these fibers. When the fibers comes reach here, the from the lower end. It started giving the fibers to the from the left one the bus giving for the interventricular septums, right? So if I draw my cell, if I draw this interventricular septums, right? Let me let me erase this guy actually. Let me erase this guy. Let me erase this guy. Okay. And let me erase this too. Let me erase it. Now let me draw interventricular septums right here. This pictures, these diagrams represent my Okay, let me draw a little upper there, okay. This represent my left, what is it? Left, the fibers coming from left bundle branches, and those bundle branches are also what they're, they're, they are, uh, they're made out of the Purkinje fibers, right? So they have, what they have is, they do have Purkinje cells, but their Purkinje cells are obviously less comparing to the ventricular myocardium, right? And then if I put electrodes, obviously with the blue, here blue is going to be, this is putting a negative electrode, and then I'm going to put a positive electrode on this with this emission, right? Positive acid. So now, what is happening here? The when cell is negative, right? Let's just with the negative. What happening here is that cell is what is this? The cell is depolarizing from the lower end, okay, from the lower ventricles, because I just took this pictures and drew it here and live in that. And obviously, these are by gap junctions. Okay, we talked about the diameters and all that stuff. So because of it is it is coming from the lower end, right? Lower end is moving, moving. It's depolarized from this directions. So let me draw. Let me just draw. So if we, if this is my heart, okay, it is depolarizing from let's say this is my ventricle, right? And then so it is depolarizing from this side. It's going that way. So positive, positive, positive. So this interventricular septum is depolarized from the lower end, and it is going moving upward, right? It is moving upward to this, upward to the right. That's what it is moving, right? So. Because of that, it's moving upward to the right. You're going to have positive charges deprived upward. You're going to have positive charges going this way, right? And there'll be a positive. But remember, it is going to upward to the right. That's how you have a battery that's going to produce upward and right. Now, when you put it upward and positive, look at these electrodes. It is going away from the positive electrodes. Because if he's going away from the positive electrodes, what is going to the needles will read as it's a negative deflections or it will have a, it will move to negative or the it will it would not move to a it would not have positive upward it will have negative it will be have a downward not upward but downward because it is going away from the positive side. Whether it, is, is it going to have a stronger deflections or weaker deflections? Actually, it's going to have a relatively weaker deflection because they do have Purkinje cells. They do have the diameter uh, thinner, but it's very, very small comparing to the comparing the ventricular myocardium. So because of that, it will have small deflections. So you kind of tiny, you kind of say with this with this septum, interventricular septum, you will have something like this. Okay. This is so now if I if I let's say let's add all this together. Let's add P waves, which is the atrial depolarizations, the A B nodal, and then let's draw septal depolarization. Okay, so with I'm gonna draw with a green after this time. So this represents P, okay, and then I have this line, okay. We call them isoelectrical line too. You can call the isoelectrical line, but this is not a true isoelectrical line. We'll talk about that. And then I'll have a because it's going away from the positive end, I'll have like this and this represent my Q and that represent my septal depolarizations okay now